friends, Billy Dean Shoemate III here, your host, and welcome to another episode of Strange Places. This podcast is brought to you by Anchor and DistroKid. Today, we're going nautical again. Yeah, because uh, I I didn't want to do like a theme here and, you know, just keep doing the same stuff. But then when I was doing research for the Bermuda Triangle, <clears throat> naturally, you're going to pull up, you know, stuff about... Uh, ghost ships and, uh, you know, aeronautical things and nautical things and stuff and stuff and things and stuff. Well, I found one that kind of tickled my pickle, and I wanted to kind of tell you about it. This one uh, really struck my fancy. I I, I put it on the list, the short list of episodes that I wanted to do. But this one just kept nagging at me. And um, I think you'll appreciate why while we get into it. As you can guess from the title... Today we're going to talk about the SS Orang Medan, if I pronounce that right. Now, what's interesting about it, the distress call, if anyone indeed heard it, wasn't something that could quickly be forgotten. Because in May 1947, vessels passing through the bustling shipping route in the Strait of Malacca, I like saying that, Malacca, near Indonesia, supposedly reported a crackling, desperate voice coming through their communication channels. All officers, including Captain Dead, the voice said, lying in chart room and on bridge, possibly the whole crew dead. I die. With those words, the SS Orang Medan cargo ship would go down in infamy. For decades, stories have circulated of the crew being found dead following the distress call, with no obvious cause worse, their faces were said to be frozen in horror, anguish, or a combination of the two. The Medan wouldn't have been the first ship to meet a mysterious fate, one of the most infamous, which we will tackle for sure, the Mary Celeste, was discovered at sea completely devoid of any occupants in 1872, but what sets the Medan apart is that no one is completely sure what happened to its crew. Or if it had ever been launched at all. Is the Orang Medan a fiction, uh, you know, perpetuated through the decades, or a ship that navigated into dangerous waters? Even stranger, if the ship was indeed real, why was just one lifeboat missing? The printed American origins of the SS Orang Medan story date back to newspaper accounts that appeared in about 1948. The most frequent, uh, frequent, I can't speak today, But what else is new, right? We'll just keep going. By writer Wynne Brooks provided a harrowing account of the ship's voyage and its bewildering fate, a report picked up by the San Francisco Examiner and other reputable publications. I stress reputable. According to Brooks, the Medan was then a 40-year-old, 5,000-ton cargo steamer ship, its name translating to Man of Medan in Malaysian. As Brooks is quick to point out, a masculine name for a ship was a break from tradition and was often cited as, uh, you know, kind of tempting fate, calling about a curse. You always name the ship after a woman. And some people point to this ship here as to why. That uh, giving your ship a, a masculine name will bring about a curse and doom it right on the spot. It, uh, you know, it was a break from ancient tradition, and could be construed as a sign of coming guaranteed misfortune. The Medan was passing through the Strait of Malacca. I like saying that. I don't know why. It's like on Elf. You ever see the movie Elf? And he's going, ooh, Francisco. That name's name's fun to say. Francisco. Francisco. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) I just derailed. Um, Let's start over, huh? The Medan was passing through the Strait of Malacca with 23 crew members, including a captain, and a number of workers native to Indonesia. Exactly what cargo it was carrying and where it was headed are details that don't appear to have been survived any accounts. In any case, ship never made it. In the story relayed by Brooks, an Italian officer of a ship received an SOS on his radio. SOS from ship Orang Medan. Ships with SW, shortwave, get urgent DH, medic. This was followed by a slightly different message from the one reported in other accounts. This one says, We are floating. Second officer dead on bridge. Captain and chief engineer dead in chart room. Probably the whole crew dead. Partly, 
here the messenger was said to have delivered. Uh, <coughs> I'm wheezing. Do you hear that? Here the messenger was said to have delivered uh, unintelligible Morse code before continuing to speak. I die. Then, nothing. After receiving the distress call, rescuers headed toward the boat, a journey that took them like into the next into the next day. When they spotted the Medan, it was no longer moving, steam no longer billowing from the smokestacks. It just listed about. A crew member from the responding ship attempted to rouse the attention of anyone on board with a loud hailer, loudspeaker. They were met with nothing but silence. Climbing aboard, the men discovered the dead bodies of the crew along with one dead dog. The radio operator, presumably the one who had pleaded for help, was still by the radio. Kind of like a scene from The Thing, don't you think? None appeared to have been subjected to any violence. Well, I guess it's not like The Thing. But they also didn't seem as though they went peacefully. Their postures were convulsed, their expressions twisted in absolute terror. There was little time to examine the bodies for clues. Not long after they boarded, the men were ordered to deboard after someone on their own ship noticed a smokestack on the Medan uh, seemed to be catching fire. After climbing off, okay, the rescuers watched as the Medan was rocked by a total of four explosions. Engulfed in flames, it sank into the water, taking information about its fate out of reach and into the depths forever. I guess it's not easy for a ship to disappear. I'm just saying. <laughs> as nautical travel usually involves records for departures, right? Stops, arrivals, among other evidence. The first and most concerning detail of the Orang Medan story is that the ship was never registered with Lloyd Shipping, which kept records of ships. There's no record of it. But it's certainly possible that the history of the vessel may have prevented an accurate chronicle of its whereabouts. Medan refers to uh, Sumatran Island, where the ships may have been registered. Others believe that the uh, Medan was a Dutch ship, that was commandeered by Indonesian pirates who proceeded to ferry illicit cargo and would therefore have every reason to avoid being documented. Of equal concern, I would say, is how exactly the story spread. According to Brooks, the tale spun out of Indonesia before arriving in the most popular Holland, Holland uh, periodical, uh, Elsevier's Weekly, January 1948. Elsevier eventually grew to include a publishing arm in science that actually continues to this day. That account was purportedly taken from the unnamed Italian officer who was part of the crew who responded to the distress call. The editor of Elsevier said he bought the rights to the man's story as well as a photograph of a body found on the Medan. The officer, the editor said, then disappeared and was not reachable. The account then circulated in England and the U.S. for the most part with details like the exact words of the radio operator uh, varying here and there. In fact, Brooks and Elsevier's, uh, Elsevier's Weekly were kind of late with the news, actually. The earliest British reports of the Medan's fate were actually circa 1940. In these accounts, the distress call was similar, but the banana... Uh, the bana I almost said... Why did I almost say banana... The Medan, maybe I want some bananas. I guess I'm hungry. The Medan's radio operator uh, soon abandoned a request for medical help and demanded a warship come to assist them. A British merchant ship uh, responded and found roughly 12 dead bodies. It's possible, one officer said, that there were more crew members, but the imminent explosion forced them to abandon the search. In this telling, the crew didn't possess any frozen faces of terror and requests for a warship may have implied an attack by pirates. As the story spread, the most frequent speculation um, <clears throat> was that the ship had been subject to some kind of gas or chemical leak that had seen its crew members overcome possibly a release of fumes after uh, you know rocky time at sea jostled the shit out of their cargo. This story was put forth in a 1953 German booklet entitled, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, it's called The Death Ship of the South Seas, if you're interested, by an, a man named uh, Otto Milke, 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 who wrote that uh, potassium cyanide and nitroglycerin could have prompted an explosion 
And we're also uh, controversial enough cargo for the ship's handlers to avoid scrutiny. But none of the rescuers were affected by any of the fumes, apparently. But remember that the Orain Medan was found with one lifeboat missing. And this is the same with every account. According to Brooks, the story of the Medan grew to involve speculation that there had been one survivor. After rowing away from the catastrophe, he was found alive on a Pacific island where he told occupants that two gases had accidentally been mixed together to create a deadly, toxic cloud. He was warned not to abandon the ship, ignored it, and reached safety. He lived long enough to retail, to relate his tale and then died as a result of either chemical inhalation or time adrift at sea. As I don't even like to include these people, but yeah, it might be relevant. A medium and author. I know I'm going there, but listen. <laughs> Michael East pointed out in 2020, one name comes up repeatedly. Now, the reason I, I shouldn't even mention he's a medium, because this is like actual research here. <laughs> Mediums don't do that. Silvio Shaleri. Shirley. Shirley. Shirley? Well, yeah, we'll say that. It was Shirley who told Dutch news outlets of the ship in 1940, and Shirley who may have been the source for accounts that same year. Did Shirley speak with Indonesian or Dutch newspapers again in 1948? Was Shirley also the man from Elsevier's Weekly spoke with in 1948, who claimed to be an Italian officer on board the rescue ship? If so, it may be that Shirley simply fed a tall tale to reporters greedy for a compelling story. That would make the subsequent disappearance understandable, right? If the Orang Medan existed, it's, in my opinion, <clears throat> certainly possible that the, cr the crew tried to maintain a low profile. It's also conceivable a gas explosion was embellished by Shirley and others. Without conclusive proof for or against its entire existence, the idea of a lone radio operator pleading for help as crew members fell around him has endured for decades. It could be true. And it's one that uh, might possibly remain a mystery forever. Some people uh, link this to an urban legend. Um, Proceedings of the Merchant Marine Council, okay, published by the United States Coast Guard. Um, there was an incident published in there, too. An earlier English reference was published on October 10th, 1948. The Albany Times of Albany, New York, and references to its original source in Elsevier's. Um, <clears throat> this is a really, really interesting case. The first appearance, and uh, I'd say March 1948, the, the, in the first ever writing of it, the forever, the name of the ship is never mentioned, but the location of the encounter is described as 400 nautical miles southeast of the Marshall Islands. The second and third articles describe the experience of the sole survivor of the Orang Medan crew, who was found by an Italian missionary and natives on the uh, Taeyongi Atoll, you know, the Marshall Islands. That man, before perishing, tells the missionary that the ship was carrying a badly stowed cargo of oil of vitriol, and most of the crew perished because of the poisonous fumes escaping from broken containers. According to the story, the Orang Medan was sailing from an unnamed small Chinese port to Costa Rica, and deliberately avoided the authorities. The survivor, an unnamed German, died after telling his story to the missionary who told this story to the author, and so on and so forth. Now, <clears throat> this is a weird one. According to the story, at some point of time in around June 1947, two American vessels navigating the Straits, uh, they were called the City of Baltimore and the Silver Star, among others passing by, picked up a lot of distress messages from the nearby Dutch merchant ship, the Orang Medan. The terrifying <laughs> uh, recorded words, I die. That's just ominous, isn't it? It's very Mary Shelley. After that chilling message, there was nothing more heard of. When the Silver Star crew eventually located and boarded the apparently undamaged Orang Medan in an attempt at rescue... It was found littered with corpses everywhere. With the dead bodies found sprawled on their backs, the frozen and allegedly badly frightened faces of the deceased 
upturned to the sun, above with mouths agaping and eyes staring straight ahead. But what's funny about the dead bodies, I, know, I, I shouldn't say the word funny, the death of a human being is never funny. <clears throat> but um, all the bodies seem to be looking up or had been pointing up when they had died, staring up into the vast nothing, into the sky, terrified. Now, the corpses were almost resembling like caricatures. No survivors were located, no visible signs of injuries on the dead bodies at all. Just as the ship was to be prepared for a tow by the Silver Star to a nearby point, we know fire broke out, exploded. There are some theories, including the unsecured hazardous, you know, hazardous materials cargo. Another one that was brought forth uh, <laughs> is uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. A lot of people put forward the theory that an undetected smoldering fire or malfunction on the ship's boiler system may have been responsible for the shipwreck. Escaping carbon monoxide would have caused the deaths of everybody, with the fire slowly spreading out of control, leading to the vessel's ultimate destruction. Now, you know, we have to look at both sides of this, okay? We have to look at the skepticism as well as the, the, the facts, right? <clears throat> now, several authors note their inability, including this guy, to find any mention of the case in Lloyd's shipping register. I looked. Furthermore, no registration records for a ship by the name of the Orang Medan could be located in various countries, including the Netherlands. While author Roy Bainton... He states that the identity of the Silver Star, reported to have been involved in the failed rescue attempt, had been established with high probability. The complete lack of information on the sunken ship itself has given rise to suspicions about the origins, credibility of the account, of the account all the way up to just flat-out conspiracy. Ship's logs for the Silver Star did not show a record of any such rescue attempt. Bainton and others have put forward the possibility that accounts of, or among others, the date, location, names of the ships involved and circumstances of the accident might have been inaccurate or even exaggerated, or that the story might be completely bullshit. One British researcher has found the story of the Orang Medan, actually, transposed to the Solomon Islands, but also with a trees connection in two British newspapers in 1940 and the, uh, the uh, Yorkshire Evening Post and the Daily Mirror, both quoting the Associated Press News Agency. This was a thing <clears throat> that was reported by major news agencies, respected ones, and I wasn't alive in 1940, sadly, <laughs> but um, I reached out to a few people. I asked those who were as of age as I could get about how the news was back then, if it was unbiased, if uh, anything was like it kind of was right now. And by and large, it seems that the news agencies back then, especially the newspapers, were pretty fucking legit. It's not like today, where every news place had an agenda. I'm sure that there was BS published here and there. But everybody that I ask, as close to that age as I could get, you know, my elder statesman, that I have interviewed during my research. They say what was printed back then, you could take it to the bank. Yeah, I don't know. Times were different then. Were people just more naive? Did people just believe more of what they heard? Was the cat out of the bag yet, right? And we found out that the governments of the world really don't have our best interests at hand. Was that even something that was on their minds? Who knows? But it seems to me that the news agencies back then were a little bit more legit. But the conspiracy has been a thing for a very, very long time. You think conspiracies are only, you know, <laughs> post-1947 Roswell, New Mexico, right? No. Conspiracies have been around for thousands of years. Whenever there is somebody in power, they're afraid of losing that power, right? So history has to be written by the winners, and as afraid of as people are of losing their ultimate power, there's going to be conspiracy. This is, uh, <laughs> um, believe it or not, the, the, I mean, this is the Orang Medan is in pop culture everywhere. You just wouldn't know it. The ship is actually the ship is actually uh, mentioned in like Ghostbusters. 
Um, <laughs> the ship's uh, mysterious sinking tragedy was told in the prologue uh, 28 film. Uh, what, what's it called? Jaya Kong 2. <laughs> it's, it's in movies and shit. You know, this is a, this is a famous story. There's one thing I'm interested in because I saw a thumbnail at one point. But apparently there was a photo taken of the bodies. We need to see that. Just not out of morbid curiosity. So I, 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 I really don't dig the gore shit. I, I, I got a weak stomach. Believe it or not, I do. That the Atloff Pass incident really fucked me up. But um, we need to look at all the evidence at hand here. See if we can find a photo. Because I failed earlier. Let's do some real digging. I might cut here for a little bit, and we'll see if we could do some research and possibly find a photo of one of the crew. Well, Billy, ask and you shall receive. Uh, yeah, maybe I just didn't do enough uh, bona fide research earlier. But, uh, yeah, there is a supposed photo of one of the crew. You know what it instantly reminded me of? If this is true, if this is legit... What it instantly reminds me of is one of the bodies at Pompeii. I mean, it's almost identical. Kind of laying on the ground, obviously, but almost frozen in place. This person is lifting up their hands like almost like they're about ready to point at something. Eyes wide open, mouth agape. Pretty creepy stuff. Now, I don't know if this is a legit photograph or not. Let me see here. Let's do some reading. Um... Many years ago, blah, 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 SOS. Skibbity bop, bop, bop. Okay, Silver Star, an American ship was closest to the Orang Medan. Ship agreed. Yeah, we know this. Okay, what about the photo, kids? Uh, okay, here's another theory I'm looking at. It's believed that the Orang Medan was transporting a top-secret chemical weapon. Possible. Historians and conspiracy theorists have researched this incident extensively. Basically, the mystery ship never existed because there isn't any proof of its existence. Logs of the Silver Star omit any records of the attempted rescue, right? No crew members of the Silver Star even shared any relevant info with the media at all. So if the Orang Medan never existed, then why did the Coast Guard reference the story in 1954? Remember that. And then, oh, here's the kicker. You ready for this? The CIA in 1959. I'm not shitting you. For a ship that never existed, it's certainly been on the U.S. government's radar. Figuratively and literally, I suppose. <laughs> Other theories. Now, listen to me here. I'm just telling you what the theories are, okay? Other theories are either that pirates or aliens, it kind of makes me sad that this doesn't say alien pirates, killed the ship's crew. <laughs> like, okay... I've seen carbon monoxide poisoning. I, I've seen what that does, unfortunately. Running a podcast like this, you come across shit. I've seen what happens to people who are chemically poisoned. If this is true, this part of it, wouldn't the crew from the Silver Star have also been poisoned, right? Another oddity was that the crew members of the Silver Star said they felt cold chills above the Orang Medan like they had just barely missed something. They said it didn't look like the bodies had been there, but even a couple seconds. It's often compared to the Mary Celeste, that these people were basically looking up, saw something that scared the living shit out of them, were calcified on the spot. And that's what this, I don't know if it's the film stock or how old it is or what have you. It looks like a real photo from the time. <clears throat> like I said, it reminds me of Pompeii. The bodies didn't show any anomalous properties. They weren't calcified. They weren't, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They weren't dehydrated or beef jerky or anything. Okay. I don't know if it's the film or uh, this crew member definitely looks like that. They felt cold chills above the Orang Medan. Okay. Cold chills on a day with a temperature of over 100 degrees, which was documented. This is another mystery that will stay, I believe, completely unsolved. Answers to any questions about the ship's crew rest somewhere on the bottom of the Straits of Malacca, right? Has anybody ever found the Orang Medan? Can't see any, any evidence of that at all. 
And then, the, yeah, side note here, when you try to look up the uh, photos of one of the dead crew members on the Orang Maden, for some reason you get a picture of Han Solo frozen in carbonite. I have no idea why. Let's, <laughs> bizarre. Uh, internet. So uh, at least we're not hitting Rule 34, right? That'd be, I, I'd probably quit this podcast if I <laughs> if I saw a Orang Maden rule. Okay, I'm not even going to do that. Not going to go there. Not even going to reference it because m- m- the way my luck works uh, i'm gonna fucking see it so let's do a um let's use my old buddy google images here google lens rather and see if we can do a reverse image search on this thing on the crew photo now i want to learn some more about this photograph hmm it's a really weird picture and I can't find any kind of verification, obviously, as if this is a crew member or not. I think that this is just a fool's errand here. Me trying to find any kind of uh, <laughs> validation as far as this photograph. We have to discount it, unfortunately. We do. We have to dis- discount this photo. We have no idea if it was taken on the ship or not. We have no frame of reference here. It's a creepy picture. It may be a mannequin. Like I said, the person looks... uh, What the hell is that word I'm looking for? It happens to wood. I am stupid. Anyway. (laughs) You know what I mean, damn it. (laughs) Uh, I feel like the dumbest person on earth. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Yes, I'm typing. Uh, skibbity bow. Okay, anyway, I'm, I'm just gonna... <laughs> I'm just gonna let that go. <laughs> There's a word that I could have used to sound super smart, you know, and stuff like, oh, I'm, I'm you know, uh... <laughs> I'm literate and I have a good vocabulary. Apparently, I do not. But uh, <laughs> that word is just gone. But it looks like Pompeii. It looks exactly like that. And if I were to be honest... I know we have to discount the photo. I know we do. But it looks exactly like somebody who was involved in a chemical weapon attack. That's what it looks like to me. That's what we do here on Strange Places, right? As I say in every podcast, and I will say it on every podcast, is that in the realm of the supernatural, the paranormal, what have you, common sense is completely gone. Either ruined by reality TV and ratings, or people nowadays just, uh, they, they want to suspend disbelief. Things are so crazy right now that we want to believe this stuff. We want it so bad that we're unwilling to look at the evidence or lack thereof that's right in front of our nos- noses or the explanations that are right in front of our noses. If we just toss everything aside because we have nothing. So if we toss everything aside, is this story believable. I think so. I think so. The photo, we have to dismiss it. Exhibit A, bam, gone. (laughs) We can't prove if it's from the ship that we don't even know existed in the first place. But what bugs me is that this thing was mentioned numerous times by our own damn government. And you know how our government is. Um, they are not going to talk about shit <laughs> if they, you know, if there's any kind of a conspiracy that could come up or anything. But, you know, some people would even argue with me there. Is the government really that smart? Because, <laughs> right? What we have here in this question is a perfect example of what I talk about in reference to a conspiracy theorist not being able to function logically or have any cognitive skills at all. (laughs) They tend to take certain facts and then totally and completely misconstrue them into something that is completely false. The questioner in this case does not have... uh, Okay, I'm just going to say it like it is, okay? Uh, The CIA talked about this ship. The Coast Guard talked about this ship. And when I'm trying to find these official records, I'm really not finding squat, but little snippets here and there. 
It's linked to the Philadelphia experiment, and it just keeps going on and on and on. But the little snippets that I'm seeing are legit. Our government did was interested in this ship somehow. A lot of people would dismiss this, but I think that this evidence, this piece of evidence goes a really long way. Is our government dumb enough to let something slip and cause a big-ass conspiracy theory? Yes. <laughs> but something like this really kind of makes the old hacklers on my neck stand up. Because this has... Uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say the word conspiracy. But this has operation written all over it. It really does. Think about, think about the USS Indianapolis, okay? The ship that delivered the bomb, right? The Hiroshima bomb. Their mission was so fucking top secret. When that thing went down and the entire crew was floating around in shark-infested waters for, what, a week? They weren't listed overdue at all. Their mission was so heavily top secret, nobody knew that this entire crew was floating around in the ocean getting eaten alive by fucking sharks for at least a few days. Was this ship carrying something it wasn't supposed to be carrying? I think it's possible. If it's uh, See, this is a weird line that we're crossing here because I don't want to say, oh, since it's mentioned in official government documentation, it's got to be real. I'm not saying that. I'm saying since it's mentioned in official government documentation, news outlets aside, I'm talking official government documentation. The United States government, at the very least, believed it was real. And I think nobody up in our government is going to write a memo about jack shit Unless there is something about this story they can benefit from. If there's something that they can use to go boom, right? Think about it. <laughs> uh, I'm not a fan of what Neil deGrasse Tyson says all the time. But he's right about one thing. You'll, you will see scientific research and scientific funding go through the roof if the government can find a way to use it to kill people. Now, I'm not being political here. We don't do that on the show. I'm being fucking realistic. If the U.S. government can take whatever technology or whatever they got and make it go boom, so they're, they're going to invest in it. This had, just has this written all over it. Uh, common sense brain, okay? Get thinking. I think that the Orang Medan, I don't know if it existed or not. Can't really prove that, but... We can say that the U.S. government was very, very interested in this thing, and they at least believed that this there was something to this, that there was something to benefit from this. At the very least, okay, they wrote a memo. At the very least, they're going to investigate this, right? So they send a ship or whatever, right? Okay. We're starting to fit the narrative here, aren't we? I have to conclude... I know I've had less evidence before. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I've, I'm sorry. I know I've had more evidence before with certain things, and I've completely debunked it. I'm not going to completely debunk this. The Orang Medan, I think there's something going on there. I think it was maybe not even named the Orang Medan. I don't think the crew was frozen in fear or pointing at the sky or instantly dropped where they were. Frozen in place like the residents of Pompeii. I don't think that there was any kind of chemical thing or else the ship that, uh, you know, did the rescue operation, which was actually mentioned in government documents, they sent a ship. They didn't say where, but they sent that ship on the rescue operation. <laughs> if there was some kind of chemical attack or chemical leak or weapons malfunction, they would have perished too. Not one member on that ship was listed to have any kind of sickness aside from the occasional diarrhea. And yes, one of the writings actually says that. One of the memos. <laughs> the only sickness any of the crew had during that quote-unquote rescue mission was a bout of the Hershey squirts, okay? Nobody on that crew died of any kind of chemical, what have you. I think the Orang Medan, if not in name, in ship, existed. 
I think there was something on that ship that the government was interested in. And I think they sent something there as fast as they fucking could. What that is, no idea. The alien theory really interested me. In my opinion, it's more than likely they were carrying some nefarious shit. Couldn't be, uh, you know, officially logged. (laughs) And either they were attacked by pirates or something untoward happened with the ship, rough seas, whatever. But the alien accounts kind of intrigue me. Because whenever I hear, you know, aliens, that just, uh, you know, (laughs) it twirls my beanie. And I got to hear more about it. Was there any kind of activity like that reported at the time? Big fat no. No lights in the sky reported. Nothing. So even the possibility of that, I have to discount. As much as I really want it to be aliens. (laughs) You know what I mean? This ain't the History Channel. So we're not just going to jump to that because we want to. Long and the short of it. Final thing I'm going to say. I think if not name the ship the Orang Medan existed. Our government was interested in something there. I'm just seeing official fucking documentation here, man. If you want me to send you the scans that I got, I will be more than happy to send them to you. It's not much, but it's mentioned. Not by name, mind you. No, it, it's not named in any of this documentation. But they were very interested in if there was a crashed ship and what was on it. I think somebody up there high enough in the brass knew exactly what was on it, why that ship wasn't registered, said, oh shit, when he heard that there was a problem and sent somebody there, hushed, hush, hush, the whole thing. Somehow, the news got a hold of it, one of the crew, uh, you know, sang like a bird, and there you go. Urban legend created. I think there's something to the Orang So I'm not going to completely debunk this. I would say... This might be the first thing on the podcast where we say, Orang Medan, not proven, not debunked as far as the common sense brain goes. Requires further study. That's what I'm gonna that's all I'm gonna say. Orang Medan requires further investigation. And we may never get that. So anyway, what do you guys think of the Orang Medan, right? Uh okay, wait. <laughs> Hold on one second. I was about to do the closing. I uh I do my research, you know, for these. And then I, uh, you know, just kind of scroll related things on the internet as I'm talking. And sometimes I'll come across little nuggets like this. I found a post on Reddit. I know. (laughs) Just listen. (laughs) Hear me out because it might be bullshit, but let's find out. Called the CIA Connection. We got to read this. It says, years after the supposed incident in 1959, assistant to the director of the CIA, C.H. Mark, wrote a letter to an unknown person, that's the letter I have, detailing things about the Orang. The Orang was not mentioned in the memo. Mark first says that he has written before to the unknown recipient about mysterious disappearances of ships and crews on the high seas. Mark then, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, wow. That really was said in there. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, Wait a minute. Marx asks the recipient if they believe that the mystery is a case of the unknown. It says in here, and I quote, I feel sure that the ship holds the answer to many of these airplane accidents and unsolved mysteries of the sea. Ooh. He also talks about fiery spheres that rise above the ocean and the numerous encounters people have had with these spheres throughout the ages? No. Okay. Well... There is a PDF that I can click on right here. I know it's from fucking Reddit, but this is from CIA.gov slash library slash reading room docs. This is, uh, oh, okay. I think we're getting into some shit now. I didn't see this earlier. Okay, so this is from the CIA, kids. Okay, this is from the CIA's website. According to the Freedom of Information Act, this thing has been declassified. So what are we looking at here? Um, I'm not seeing anything about the ship. Uh, do, 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 do. What is this? This is about aviation. I don't see anything about the Orang in here. I don't see nothing. Okay, what the hell? It says there's a PDF you can get from CIA.gov. Oh, okay, here it is. Um, okay. 
C.H. Mark, director of the CIA, 1959, assistant director, I should say, 1959. Okay, I'm reading it right now. Um, recipient blank. Hmm. Is this a case of the unknown? I feel sure that the ship holds the answer to many of these airplane accidents and unsolved mysteries of the sea. Fiery spheres rise above the ocean, blanked out, big black marker. Numerous encounters people have had, big black marker. Enchanting sea, what terrifying secret does it hold, black marker. I feel sure that the black marker also holds the answer, black marker. Interesting. It's noteworthy to mention uh, that I should tell you that the name of the recipient of the letter, the person Mark wrote the letter for, remains censored by the CIA. Mm. This opens up some questions now in the discussion of the Orang Medan and of governmental knowledge of uh, this thing. Yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think of this whole ordeal? What exactly does Mark mean by secrets and the unknown? That's interesting. Why would someone who is a member of one of the most powerful agencies in the U.S., be familiar with this, right? I don't know. This further perpetuates it. I, I, uh, I'm not going to say this thing is legit, man. I, I don't know. There, uh, there's not enough to say that. I know it, it really makes you light up, you know, saying fiery spheres and shit coming out of the ocean and all that. But um, I can't rule out, you know, there was a fire, man. There may have been chemicals on that ship. You know, we can't just jump to UFO. But this memo is interesting. Even if the orang ended up not existing, this letter might indicate something interesting about what they knew. This is crazy. Uh, I wish I'd stumbled upon this earlier. I guess perhaps the most apparent question of this is, what we have to get to, who exactly did Mark send this letter to? Why would the CIA disclose this letter and the sender but censor the person receiving it, right? You got to think about that, too. Freedom of Information Act. We got this thing. It's heavily marked out. But why censor the person who got it? That bugs me. I don't know. Whether, whether skeptic or believer, the fact that the CIA apparently mentioned... I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. Mentioned something like this ship and is censoring information along with outlandish nature of this letter might indicate something more is going on. So yeah, this even further perpetuates what I said. Requires additional study. So anyway, <laughs> let's really do the outro. I, I promise I'm going to close Chrome, okay? <laughs> what do you guys think of the Orang Medan? Is it true? Is it legit? Did I miss that one crucial detail? The one thing that would have blown this whole thing apart, huh? Let me know, okay? Make sure to go on Asylum817.com. That's Asylum817.com for all things strange places related. All the social media links are there as well as the link to get to our Patreon account where you can get early access to shows, bonus stuff, giveaways at certain tiers, even for as little as a dollar a month. Help a brother out. But anyway, guys, I will catch you later, okay? Thanks for listening again. I promise uh, we will take a break from the nautical stuff on this next one. I don't know what we're going to do yet, but we will, uh, you know, uh, we will disembark, okay? <laughs> we will dismount the ship. So, um, yeah, are we ever going to run out of strange places? I don't know. Because every town has a strange place, and maybe one day we'll visit yours. <laughs> <laughs>